long story short, um, Grant and I are married, um, only recently married, but we've been together for nearly eight years now. Um, I have a background in human resource management and I was working a drive-in, drive-out job, which required me to be away from home four nights a week. So when people sort of talk about their reason for getting into, you know, an internet business or an online business, that's basically my reason for getting into it because I was sick of living away from home. Um, we are getting closer to getting married and it just, I realized that there was more to life surely than having to work away from home and being away from the people that you love. So that was my personal main motivation for it. Um, it was just a lifestyle that wasn't working for us and we do live in quite a regional area or we did at the time we live in a bit more of a um, small city now of 70,000 people but um, yeah still outside of the city and a lot of people said to me sort of I don't know growing up I suppose um, I come from tr quite a traditional background where um, I was expected to Go to, um, go to university straight out of school because that's just what everyone did. Um, and, you know, I was pretty academic. And the reason that I actually got into uh, human resources is because my careers advisor at school, um, we had a meeting one day in year 11 and, you know, you have a discussion to see what, you know, what are your strengths, what are your weaknesses, what are your interests? And he basically said to me, oh, you like people, you should get involved in HR. And I didn't even know what HR was. And um, I basically took his advice um, and his advice alone in order to determine my future career. So I finished um, high school and went straight into university, did a three-year degree and graduated with the Bachelor of Business and Human Resource Management. And my first job was in a jail um, where I worked as a recruitment coordinator. So basically hiring people to work at the jail, essentially. Um, later on in that job, I actually got the opportunity to interview inmates prior to their release. Um, basically just as though they were applying for jobs in the outside world. So asking all the tough questions like, why is there such a big gap in your resume and that sort of thing. Um, and basically preparing them for what it would be like. Um, some of them had been um, within the prison for a really long time, some up to sort of 20 years. And so it's a massive change for them to be able to um, have that freedom. And anyway, long story short, um, yeah, got into this job where I had to work away from home in order to make a living, um, a good living. So Grant and I were both on really good incomes and um, yeah, do you want to sort of take over yeah, how we, we came across SFM? Pretty much, we got to the point where we had the, as Elena said, we had the good jobs, had the good income, but it didn't take us long to be, like, like honestly, a year into that job that I was, like my job that I still have, um, I knew that I just didn't want to do it. Just thought there's definitely a lot more to my potentiality than turning up hating my job and everything I do all day, every day than than that and of course I felt like I had a lot more to give a lot more to do and a lot more to achieve and we then like we long long story short decided we're going to start a recruitment agency business with the learners human resource management um, and that's sort of what led into this realization that that kind of business traditional business is so expensive to try and start and, um, with all the overhead costs and all that sort of stuff and just went sort of looking for ways that we could streamline as much of that business as we could online and that, that's how we come across the SFM. It didn't take us long after that to just can that completely and go, we want to at least just start as, as resellers of the SFM and go as hard as we can with that, master that um, income stream, which we're still obviously in the process of doing. Um, and then we can sort of sit down and think about what we really want to do. So, so, yeah, so we went gold within the 10-day window when we first joined. And then, um, so we joined in August of last year. Um, in December is when we attended Momentum Day in Brisbane. And that was my first introduction to the SFM. So I knew that Grant had been going through the training, but I didn't really understand what it was. Um, but I just knew that he was really passionate about it and I trusted his judgment and he basically said to me you should come along to this live event so then you can actually meet people that are in the community you can meet the founders and that's what I did and then in June of this year I quit my full-time job to work on SFM full-time so we went platinum then and we just went black um, after this momentum day so yeah. looking back I wish we went black straight away but I guess 
totally different mindsets back then. Yeah. Just like we've changed a lot in eighteen not. months. <laughs> mm. Um, but yeah, so yeah, as Grant said, so we went platinum after Momentum Day last year. So in literally, I think it was the thirty first of December that we went platinum. So just because this year was a bit hectic for us, so we moved towns, we sold house, we bought a house, we um, got married, went on a honeymoon. We didn't actually have the opportunity to attend the Platinum Brand Incubator until Perth a couple of weeks ago. Mm. So that was super exciting and it was something that we've been looking forward to all year. And we didn't, to be honest, have a lot of expectations going in. The only thing that I sort of knew about Platinum is what I'd heard from Dan Holloway 12 months ago at Momentum Mm. Day when he shared with everyone his experience. And so that to me was enough to go, I know that there's something that these people have gone through that we haven't gone through, but I really want to be a part of it. Mm. Um, And so, yeah, went into the room. So I think there was about... 30 of us, 29 or 30 of us in total. Um, And it was honestly one of the most incredible experiences that we've ever been a part of. And we don't want to sort of give too much away in terms of the actual process of the three days and that sort of thing, because if anyone is looking, either is platinum or is looking to go platinum in the future, um, it's something that we want you to have your own unique experience. We can't just sit here and tell you what it's like in there because you'll then come into it with expectations and that's just not what you want to be doing. You want to be coming there with completely no expectations of the whole thing. That's what we were. Um, people, I, I said to people, um, like I think we were talking Holloway you know, the day before or... Oh, I can't after remember. day one, I think. Oh, was it? Okay. Yeah, we were talking to lots of people. Oh, Jay Williams, that's who it was. I said, I don't even know what to expect. And he's like, just don't expect that thing. Just go in there completely empty headed. Yeah. And that's what we did. And that's the way you got to get into, into platinum. Um, because it's like a, it's a, it's a unique a, um, experience. It is. A and, unique and it's, experience. Yeah. That's exactly, exactly what it is. And it's, um, that first day, especially when you're sort of getting to know and getting to, getting, um, used to the vibe of the room and, and realizing mm-hmm. that it's a really safe space and that, and that the more vulnerable you can be in that space, um, for those three days, um, as Anthony, of course, would know, um, the, the more, more you're going to get out, out of it. it. Yeah. And um, that's, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's so, what so basically what we're going to do is just sort of share a few takeaways um, that we got from those few days. Um, probably one of the biggest ones for us is, like you guys would have heard it a number of times, but the Platinum Workshop just cemented it for us personally, um, is the whole relationship building process. So actually building a relationship with your leads and your members and the people that are signing up and recognising that they're more than just a first name and an email address. So people want to buy from people that they, they know, like and trust. And if they feel like they don't have a relationship with you, then it's not likely that they're going to purchase anything that you're selling. So the whole purpose of the brand incubator is to obviously um, find out more about yourself so that then you can incorporate that into your personal brand. And then you can um, focus on bringing that same message throughout all your advertising so that when people, um, you know, sign up to receive the video series, they already have some sort of an idea as to who you are, what you're about, what your values are. And then, it's it's basically it's just one way of really aligning everything rather than you know having one person in a video so you know um this part of me gets shown in a video and then when they sign up there's a welcome video which is a completely different persona and if it's not aligning then they're not gonna you're not gonna build that trust with the pe- with these people so um yeah probably, probably the main part of it is um like authenticity set like people are only going to resonate with the authentic version of you. So if you like look at the lifestyle team, you're like, I want to be like the lifestyle team or I want to be like Dan Holloway. So you act like them, like you do advertising like them. You say you've got this massive, you know, whatever. And then even as good as you can probably try and pretend to be that way, because that's what you think you have to do. Eventually the people that you might be attracting into the business, um, or into, into your business are going to cotton on to the fact that you, you're not really being authentic and they, it'll just trigger something like in their intuition, in the back of their mind, and they're not going to want to buy. So like Mitch and Geordie are probably the best example. I've been actually, I had never really 
had much to do with them and, and been over their material. But I was checking out their YouTube channel um, yesterday. They are phenomenal with how authentic they are. They are 100% themselves. And the reason why they're doing so good, I believe, is, is that is a hundred percent that and the brand incubator process is all about knuckling down and figuring out like your values like what you really value and 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 it's not something that you can do yourself some someone can't just walk up to you and go what do you value because like you might have this little idea in your head of what you think you value and what you think you need to be like the brand incubator process like pushes that completely away and like a third party i.e. the whole room, Alex Eastman, this whole um, incubation process and brand brand incubator um, curriculum and the process is what works out truly what your values are. And then, then they can take like all your branding and base it around you and exactly who you are. And I sort of, you know, I've heard people sort of talk about that sort of thing before and like, oh, yeah, I guess that makes sense. But then when it comes to me jumping in front of a camera or something like that, I'm like you know i try to stand up straight you know like i try to be who i think i should be version. but like yeah. <laughs> i realized straight away that hang on a minute now like now in hindsight i'm not really who i'm pretending to be here so what's going to happen when i try attracting those people who i'm pretending to be like into my business and they're going to realize straight away that i'm not really that sort of person it's not going to work it's a better way better method or way better um a, it's way better to just be a hundred percent yourself, design your whole brand, your whole business around yourself and um, bring those people, bring those people in because they're the people who are going to resonate with you and to really knuckle down and know who you really are. It's, you have to go through something like platinum to fully understand that. I believe anyway, especially after going through platinum yourself. <laughs> yeah. And we're not here to sell platinum to you. Because oh, yeah. <laughs> obviously we don't get any commissions from any of you guys, but um, <laughs> we basically just want to tell you about what the experience was like for us. And um, really. Have, have you got anything to add to that, Anthony, before we keep going? I'm sure you would. <laughs> yeah, um, absolutely. Um, I confess I probably had some preconceived notions about what platinum might be. But part of my background is um, like corporate training and development and I uh, have sort of done a lot of work in that self-help space and identifying who you are and those sorts of things. But I think one of the things that you said um, a couple of minutes ago um, is that it takes a third party to be able to help to recognise who your authentic self is. Um, and I've, on reflection, um, part of my work also is career development coaching and career advice and those sorts of things. And I'm uh, constantly staggered at how close people, how too close people are to their own story and to themselves to be able to recognise their talent and value. And uh, for me, uh, I can only echo what uh, Grant and Helena have said. It is a completely transformational experience yeah. because, uh, in a sense, you step out your, outside yourself and you begin to see others as uh, they might see you. And um, I think further to that, and the, the only thing I would sort of say about how this adds to your marketing is, you know, I think just about everybody in SFM is familiar with the law of attraction. Mm. And like does attract like. So if you are presenting an inauthentic self, you're more likely perhaps to attract inauthentic people. Yeah. As opposed to speaking with your event authentic voice, you're more likely to attract people who are truly authentic about themselves and life purpose and those sorts of things. So I think that sort of translates into the sort of value that comes out of platinum, that once you have a a deep-seated appreciation of who you are, what you stand for, what the important things are, and you begin to talk about that, that's when people sit up and take notice. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, they're kind of my takeaways um, without sort of getting too much into the process, but it is a process of self-discovery, a different process of self-discovery. Um, and the fact that it's facilitated, the fact that it's such a safe environment to do that, yeah. Um, are all big, you know, plus factors for me. Yeah. You know, that, that's kind of how I see it. Yeah, that um, that's actually really beautiful the way you said that. That so, 
if you look at the, the SFMDA as a whole, like Stu and Jay are trying to attract the right kind of people into this business. And um, like, especially from Jay's experience with his last business where he had a whole lot of um, millionaires and a whole lot of people had done really well financially out of, out of, out of what he'd created. He'd also created a whole lot of people who didn't really know who, who they were, what they were. And like, this is, you know, it's hard to, like it's probably easy for someone who's made a lot of money to say, and like we're definitely not those people. But when you do make a lot of money and you realise that money now is not an issue for you, um, it's kind of people kind of feel empty because they just have been so obsessed by chasing this money. And I think that's what he finished up with. Um, and I think that's why they ended up finishing that business in the end. And platinum is such an important part. It's probably, I think, Jay Kubasek's most important part of the whole DEA process for this reason. Not only is now he still providing a massive opportunity for people to generate income for themselves, but through this process, if people do it and they do it properly, they're going to figure out who they are really. And, and they're going to figure out their life purpose. Um, Anthony, they're going to figure out their vision, their mission, their purpose. Um, it's not just creating people, you know, giving, it's not just creating people that are, that are financially free. It's giving them, them all that. And, and, and when he creates that and think of it from like a business perspective for Stuart and Jay, when he's creating people, when they're creating people, um, like that, then those people are going to start attracting the right kind of people back into their business. So as far as return on investment goes for them, it's going to be good because there's more and more, more and more people as they're filtering through this whole thing and all these people are going through this process more and more and and we all all of us are going to get start getting better at attracting better people into the business it's just going to get way way better for them so for me like i might not be right with the way i've 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 just said that but for me that that makes a lot of sense in my head as to as to why they're doing what they're doing even from just a business perspective business perspective yeah yeah, and if I can just add to that too, Grant, that, you know, when you, I think it was uh, probably at the last Momentum Day, the one before in Brisbane where both uh, Stuart and Jay sh- shared their stories and they talked a little bit about Maslow's Pyramid and, you know, like, so this is a process of needs that are uh, met and then needs that are unfulfilled. And both, of, both Stuart and Jay got to a point in their lives where, they were totally unfulfilled. So money simply was not an object. Mm-hmm. And because those needs for money and wealth and income and lifestyle were met, their next stage in, in development was really about, I, I need to be involved in something that makes me feel worthy and worthwhile. And so that, you know, is part of the evolution of, uh, of SFM and, uh, you know, DEA with Jay and those sorts of things. And, you know, the thing that I often reflect on, you know, when we go to live events, events like Platinum, it is just absolutely amazing that you are surrounded by people. I mean, this is proof of law of attraction to me. Mm-hmm. But there are so many like-minded individuals. And, sure, money is a part of this, but there's a deeper purpose as well. It's about fulfilment. And uh, it, it's, uh, it's no accident that that's occurred. Because yep. that's that's the kind of people the business attracts. Yeah, that's exactly right. And as you just touched on too, Anthony, one of the biggest takeaways we had um, from a couple of weeks ago is the value of getting involved in the community. Because the more that you give and the more that you open yourself out, up and become vulnerable within the community, the more you're going to be able to express yourself better. The more that you're going to be able to relate to your target market better the more that you're going to just have so much more of a fulfilled life. And that's something that I have noticed as one of the biggest changes in myself in the last 18 months of being involved with SFM, because I used to care a lot about what other people thought of me. Um, I think, you know, from going through some past experiences and things, I now can recognize why I am who I am and how, yeah, my past experiences have shaped who I am today but that doesn't mean that I'm fixed to being this one person just because I've had, you know, 26 years of being someone. So yeah, in the last 12 months, I've changed more than I have in my entire life. And um, it's a really, really important thing for me because I recognize now that 
I look at certain things within my life differently. I look at the world differently. Um, I had a girlfriend come over yesterday actually for a visit who has been living overseas for a few years and her and I haven't connected um, in the last five years, but just for some reason this week got in touch and it was one of the most amazing catch ups because I have changed so much as a person in the last five years, but so has she and the amount of things that we had in common in terms of values and our outlook on life was just amazing. And so they're now the relationships that I value the most, the people that can, I can connect with on that level rather than people that I might just have, you know, a similar interest with or like, you know, I have a hobby the same or something like you just feel like you can connect with people on a deeper level now. And then that's, now what we recognize we need to put across in our ads because that's the side of people that we want to see because that's now who we are and who we value like they're the sort of people that we value as well so um so yeah part of the platinum process as well which is um an optional extra i suppose you can call it um so a few of you might have heard of jj's pinpoint your purpose um it also used to be called find your why um, so yeah, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's about finding your why, um, and pinpointing your purpose, but, um, it's a process that, um, is offered as part of platinum, um, and at, at, at an additional cost. Um, and it's something that Grant and I have decided that we're both going to get involved in because we really think it's going to cement, um, yeah, finding out who we truly are and then being able to then um, put that into our um, into our branding and into our marketing as well. So I'm actually doing mine this week. So tomorrow and Saturday, I've got my meetings with JJ, which is super exciting. Um, and Grant will be doing his when his availability yeah. lines up with JJ. So um, yeah, so that's just another thing which um, I'm definitely going to share um, once I sort of go through the process and find my purpose statement i suppose and just seeing how yeah all of everything that you've gone through within your life and your values and everything comes together in one sentence basically um so yeah really really looking forward to really looking forward to that um we've been black members for about two weeks now um so we literally um became black on like the day after momentum day so we did our platinum process and spoke to a lot of people obviously within the workshop who were positioned at black and some of the different um things that are on offer um as part of black so we'll um yeah so it's been good so far we've only done one webinar but the webinar that i participated in yesterday was fantastic absolutely amazing um yeah, it was fan yeah, so good. I don't know if any of you guys know Brian Parsley, but he is an absolute legend and so knowledgeable and yeah, really, really great guy to learn from. So yeah, we're not here to pitch platinum and black to you guys. We just wanted to sort of share what we've gotten out of it. And um, yeah, I don't know. Does anyone have any questions that they have either about what we've sort of gone through over the last few weeks or our whole time at the SFM or anything? We're open to anything. Quiet house. <laughs> Did you have anything else, Anthony, that you sort of wanted to share or? I'd have you asking a question though otherwise. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, go, yeah. and so it's not really more about um, the platinum and black, it's about going back a little bit further from the beginning because mm -hmm. I know that I'm positioned at present at Elite. I am seriously thinking at present on gold. Mm -hmm. I just want to know, like the, I would just want to know now the value of the gold that you saw going from gold then to platinum. The value of gold sitting on the gold for a while. So I've got to work out which where I'm going to position myself. Go. Gold's definitely the best value, especially before the first of January two thousand eighteen, because that's when the price rises are. Yeah. Um, I oh, look. In terms of having the one on one coaching with Greg and Fiona, yeah. that was a massive game changer for us. And now they've got the um, the certifications oh, yeah. through so digital, yeah. digital market yeah. certifications, which are full on, uh, but they yeah, are worth yeah. it 100%. And uh, yeah, look, 
I, I would just say go as high as you can now. Like this yeah. is hindsight for me. I know exactly how it feels. Like yeah. we had so many people, like Gerard and Chris, even when we were coming in, just going, just go as far as you can, go black. Mm-hmm. And I'm sitting there and you think of all these stupid reasons you had why you can't do it. And I'm just sort of kicking myself now that I, I didn't do it. But yeah, it's just the way it is, I suppose. I think for us too, like we, um, we looked at it as we want to position as high as we can, but we also want to have a marketing budget because we've seen a lot of people position at black, you know, straight away, you know, within the first month, mm-hmm. but then they don't have a budget to actually start doing any paid marketing. And then, you know, I sort of look at it as in, well, where do you go from there? Like you can do as, you know, write as many blogs and stuff as you can, but it'll only get, it'll take a lot longer in order to achieve your results. So, Organic traffic's definitely not our strong point at all. No, not at all. We do um, need to have a bit of a marketing budget there, but it's got to see if you think about it, I suppose. Like, um, the calls with Greg and Fiona are great because someone is literally there yeah. who's been there, who's done it, and they can look over your campaigns personally, like one-on-one, and yeah. you can book calls as often with them as you like. So it's really good just to be able to have that check-in and um, they're very, very honest with you. So if they think that you're heading in the wrong direction, they will tell you um, because ultimately that there's no point in you wasting your money if you're heading down the wrong direction. Yeah. So, um, so that's probably the biggest thing that we've taken out of gold is being able to have that personal one-on-one coaching. Um, and then obviously just having access to a lot more training and that sort of thing. And then now the certifications as well, um, because yeah, as, you know, Angie with Digital Marketer, um, there's just so much value in there. And each of the certifications are like, it's like $500 to $1,000 retail price for each one of those. So um, it's a massive value. And that's obviously why they're putting the price of gold up. I think it's the biggest increase they're having um, for that reason, because there's now a lot of value in there. And um, I'm not sure, is it... The 10 day window still valid. I, I don't know when they were sort of implementing that. Was that straight after Momentum Day or yeah, was it was. till the end of the year? I don't know. I'm not I sure. I, I, I heard rumors of, I think it was to the end of the year, but I'm not sure. Yeah. So even if you want to just send um, Mark Hayes a message and just say, hey, is the 10 day window pricing still available? And just send yeah. him, um, I know he's pretty flexible in terms of um, like payment plans and that sort of thing. So um yeah he's pretty good with extending deadlines we just went we just went straight up after momentum day and just did it for a couple of reasons a because we knew we had to do it we were always going to do it yeah we had the discounted b we had the discounted price uh for well we just don't even know how long that whether it was 10 days or the end of the year didn't matter and also we had a couple of platinum members in there too so we thought we want to jump in and go black as quickly as we can in case they decide to go black so we don't miss out on their commission. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that was another thing while we were there yeah. um, doing our platinum workshop. We got our first black sale. Black being yeah, well done. Yeah. yeah, thank you. It was very exciting but yeah, it when you miss out on the commission, yeah. you sort of go, damn. yeah, damn. <laughs> yeah, I can, can imagine that was, would feel that way. And I'm yeah. really until like myself not having the team yet is thinking like oh I probably won't feel won't sort of like feel that way until it actually happens. That's mm-hmm. right. You understand that. But, you know, know what? Sort of, like, getting right. the paper. Yeah. I just roughly did the numbers in my head. Had we have gone black before Momentum Day without the discounted price, we we actually are probably better off. Mm. Well. Oh, without the discount. Yeah, price. without the discount because yeah, yeah. before momentum day, it would have cost us the twenty thousand, not the fourteen. Yeah, that's and true. And yeah. we didn't lose six thousand dollars out of missing out on that black. We only lost four and a half. Awesome. Four and a half. Yeah. Lost. And technically, the yeah. way we did it still worked out better for us. Exactly. But yeah. yeah. And we didn't know that they were going to do this discount, but we just... We had a pretty it. good hunch, though. I had a pretty good hunch. Yeah. yeah. Did so, you yeah. know the person was going black? We found yeah, that we out did. on the third of November. Yeah. So we knew that she was going black and she was just getting, um, yeah, her finance and everything sorted. So um, once yeah. that, yeah, it literally came through on the first day of Platinum. So pretty cool. Very good. Excellent. Yeah. Well done. Thank you. I, I just wanted to add uh, a couple of things to Angie um, about the decision to go gold. That's where I jumped in in the first instance. and. If you recall the, uh, the exercise that Justin did uh, at Momentum Day, just about um, 
about positioning and uh, gold is the best initial return on, on your investment just purely because of the levels of commission that are available to you. Yeah. Uh, and when I positioned the gold in that, in that first sort of 10 day window, I actually didn't understand any of that other than the thing that attracted me was that you're a partner for life and uh, you know there was, uh, there was profit share. And I've only upgraded to platinum this year. I can't afford to um, uh, upgrade to black for uh, positions uh, for reasons that I have mentioned. I need a marketing budget. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've retired from full time work now, so SFM is my income. Um, but black is my ultimate target. But the other thing I'd, I'd encourage you to do if you haven't done this, that um, something that's been happening probably for the last, uh, probably since Phoenix, uh, maybe a bit before then, is the number of people that are positioned at black uh, or who are positioned high um, within the community who are now running um, uh, groups and mini tutorials. Now, if you're not plugged into any of that, you're missing out on a huge lot. So in the back office, sure, there's all that training there, but um, for example, uh, Dan Holloway is doing amazing weekly webinars. You have the opportunity to send in a question with them. Alex Smale is another one. Um, so get on most people's email lists, get into their Facebook groups. And the, the amazing thing is that, I mean, I'm just thinking about Dan in particular, that um, his, his webinars cater to people from beginner right through to advanced. And so it's an hour, it's an action-packed hour. So if you, if, you know, I've asked dumb questions of Dan. There's still, I mean, there's heaps of stuff I don't know. And it's technical stuff and it's... Um, it's law of attraction and stuff. I mean, there, there is no subject that's off the table, and he deals with it. Um, and similarly with Alex Smale, who, you know, who is a professional marketer online. You know, those guys are uh, absolutely prepared to share everything they know, and it's just as simple as finding their Facebook group, asking to join, and you're in. So I think that's a big, big wave of development going through the community that... Uh, that people are actually setting up forums where they're sharing their take on the business and, uh, and that sort of stuff. So, and I yeah. don't know, Grant, Helena, you're probably doing something similar, I guess. We will. We, we just will. want to get a few We're more members there. yet. Yeah. yeah. Like, but, probably want to, that's probably what we'll start doing when I get out of my job. And yeah, we're a part of all of them. Um, so yeah. we're, we're in Dan's, we're in Alex's. Colin Bishop has one as well. Um, These will be good too when he gets yeah. his momentum. And, um, I was with Colin this morning, in fact. It was a great little webinar. There's only four of us on there. It was oh, brilliant. Good. Oh, that's <laughs> Rich, and, Rich, and Peter, Rich and Peter did one too. Yes, they are. Yeah. 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 And Trish, Trish and Chris have just started. They started this week. They on their webinar yeah. as well. So I'm in yeah. a lot. <laughs> like, I, don't, I don't get to go on many live. Yeah. yeah. I don't Those get to go on many live. But Dan's, is, Dan's yesterday was brilliant. And I have yeah. asked questions on his as well. I've seen you on yeah. I've seen you on dance before. That like those webinars are probably the best value in the community, I reckon, at the moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Especially yeah. Dan Holloway's. But like, oh my god, Rich and Peter's tolls. Yeah. Um Gavin McLean's doing them doing them as well. Yeah. Alex Smart, like they they are probably the best value in the community, I reckon. Probably better than bloody anything. Yeah, and like, they're the people that are on the ground and getting the results. Yeah. So it's really great to hear of what's been working for them and they're more than willing to share everything, yeah. um, which is which is awesome. So um, we have got so many gold nuggets just from going on their pages and having people, you know, put resources up. And um, yeah, today for us, actually, I had a massive breakthrough um, just from something that I saw on Colin Bischoff's and it was, yeah, it was all about... I don't, know, I don't know if any of you guys are on YouTube, but um, AdWords and actually using the platform, which is Ad, AdWords Editor, rather than just the yeah. regular AdWords platform. And, oh, my goodness, it has changed my life, like made things a thousand times easier um, because the more that I got to find out a little bit more about um, YouTube and AdWords and how everything worked and how we should be targeting and what um, ad groups to set up and that sort of thing, it started getting super complicated. And then so I was sort of taking on board most things, but then some things I sort of just put in the too hard basket. And by watching this one half an hour video today, I just went, 
oh, I can do everything. Like now I can do as, you know, there's, there's no limit basically. And once you have one cam campaign set up, it's just a matter of like copying and pasting and tweaking. And anyway, so for the future, if anyone is considering going on YouTube, check out AdWords editor because it makes yeah. life so much easier. Yeah. Um, that was Dan my was me <laughs> Dan mentioned yesterday in his med in his that he's got also a training with him and Gavin stepping through the editor. I have, yeah, I have seen that one. Yeah. yeah. So is I that, think was that for AdWords editor or that was just for regular AdWords, yeah. yeah. So the actual AdWords mm -hmm. platform online. Yeah. So AdWords yeah. editor is basically an an offline version, yeah. which then you can just import all of your data from the campaign into AdWords. It's just a lot easier way of doing it because it means you can copy and paste stuff and just do little changes and that sort of thing um, rather than having to manually do it because that's what I was doing before. I was manually creating Create the campaign and yeah. go through every single thing. Selecting. Yeah, nightmare. Yeah. And then you're more likely to make mistakes too when you're doing it that way, which I did the other day. Um, but I didn't even share that as a fail this week. It's just for, um, awesome. Yeah. No, first challenge. I forgot. But, but you um, got a fail. Yeah. Cool. Oh, it was a massive fail. We got really excited because we started getting all these leads. And um, yeah, they came from Pakistan and India, India. and um, Mexico. <laughs> and yeah. Just forgot to put the location on. I just put the forgot to put the location on, so the whole campaign was running worldwide. Um, so yeah, we're getting plenty of leads, which was awesome, but not much quality. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, it was a it was a learning experience, and that's yeah, that's the whole point of doing you know that sort of challenge is recognizing your fails and learning something from it. So definitely have done that this week. <laughs> Did anyone else have any questions or anything that you want to ask? Open to anything. Cool. I think you're talking, Anthony, but I think you're muted. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you're right. I'm, a beginner. I'm a beginner at this webinar stuff. No, I was just going to say, you guys have done a great job tonight. And uh, oh, thank yeah, you. Well, thank love you. hearing your story. It's great it's stuff. Been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Thanks for your help and for your shares as well. Yeah. You would one of the most inspirational people that I met in Perth. So it was so nice. I've been, been raving about you for two weeks, Anthony. I have. Thank yeah. Thank you. I told Anthony that I would like him to be my dad. So <laughs> <laughs> I, see that, um, I see that Jane Pack has um, Bev and Ed as her digital parents. So Anthony might have to be my dad. <laughs> nice. Okay. I accept. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to the family. Thanks, Andy. I'm glad we've made it official. <laughs> no. No, I have one thing. Question. Yeah. Go, guys. Oh, you go, Susan. You go. Okay, I've just got a statement. Mm -hmm. And I think Robbie may feel the same way because he's done platinum, I think, last year, year before. But it never stops. And it's fantastic. All of that stuff never stops. And that is where, well, you know my story, but that is where I started truly wanting to find out who I was. And I found it. It's taken you. me, because of all that, that stuff with no memory, etc. it's taken me three and a half years to get to where I am now. So, um, you know, like even when you two came on initially, I was not the person I am now. Mm. So to be able to associate with words, and I wrote something today, and I clicked, and it was like, oh, damn. <laughs> Why has it taken me so long? So when I initially started, I had $10,000, and I went, I will go black, 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 black. I'll go platinum. Ah! But it's the best mistake I've ever made to the point that I no longer regret not going black. Yeah. I'll rephrase. At that stage, I was so angry with myself that I needed to do the platinum to find out who I was. So even if someone says I've got the money, I will do this and they don't end up doing it, don't get angry with them because it's where they should be. Yeah. Thanks, yeah, Let them know that it's where they should be. 
yeah. let them know because they'll have so many self-doubts and everything else. But if you support that decision, they will find themselves. And if you haven't got a marketing budget, well, I forgot about marketing budget. <laughs> so I've had to learn a lot of stuff the very hard way. And there's just a different way. And That's it's just right. totally different. So if you're doing AdWords for um, advertising, it's different to AdWords for not advertising. Two yeah. totally different systems. Okay, that's me. Thanks, Thanks Susan. Susan. Hi, Kelly. Great. How are you, Hi. Kelly? Hi. Congratulations <laughs> on the wedding, too. Thanks. The photos are beautiful. Love them. Thank you. Thanks very um, much. I just wanted to um, see if you guys have got any advice. So I'm just an elite, mm -hmm. and all I can do at the moment is vlogging so i'm trying i had a call with patty the other day which was really good i got some a lot of clarity from her um but yeah because i just kind of all over the place not knowing sh should i be doing the training should should i be listening to all the webinars like there's just so much to be doing and that's kind of all over the place so i was feeling a bit lost but because um I'm going to be at a leap for probably, I don't know how long. My husband supports me, but he's still not on board with it. Yeah. He's still yeah. really sceptical and he's like, well, where's, show me the money. Yeah. 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 It takes time. There's so much to learn. Give me a break. Like, yeah. And it puts so much pressure on you when you... Yeah, it's terrible. You know, he... He just thinks I'm sitting on the computer. Like he doesn't know what's involved. Yeah. And so that that makes it hard. So um, I, I just don't know if you you guys got any other yep. advice you can add to that. Yep. Yeah. Get him along to a momentum day. It's probably yeah. the first thing I'd do. That that's how I came on board. That's um, what I did with Elena. Yeah, I was right, yeah. I was super skeptical um, because I don't make um, quick decisions. I don't sign up to anything online, and if the opportunity was put in front of me to pay twenty nine ninety five for an application, I wouldn't have done it. And so yeah. I feel like there's something that there's a reason that Grant and I are together because if it wasn't for him, then I wouldn't be on this path either. Um, and the reason basically that I wouldn't have signed up for a twenty nine ninety five fee is because yeah. I just would have thought that there was something, there was some sort of subscription service or, you know, even though there's this guarantee, um, how do I know it's a guarantee? It's just this thing that's online. And, and so now yeah. I draw on that when I'm talking to our own, um, our own leads who are considering yeah. having an application yeah. because I go, look, this is where I can come from. I was literally there going, yeah. I don't know. And it was, it was Grant's passion for it that in the end made me come around because I went, well, you know, I really trust him. I trust his judgment. Yeah. Um, and then when I came along to Momentum Day, I could physically see these people that they weren't just an online presence. They yeah. were real people. I could meet Stu and Jay, the founders of the company. Yeah. Um, and you know, that's not an opportunity that a lot of people get that are involved with online marketing. So that all of those things together is basically, um, what sealed the deal for me, whether that's an opportunity for you guys, I'm not too sure whether it's possible for you both to be able to attend an event or. I would have liked to have gone to Perth, but, um, it just didn't happen, but yeah. you know, I'm just like, next, I just love seeing couples doing this together yeah. Yeah. and like you guys it's i just think i wish my husband would like come on board with this with me yeah. because i see him working his fingers to the bone he's got his own excavation business but he's on nights at the moment yeah so he'll yeah. leave at tonight he left at five drives to sydney yeah. or 40 minutes to Horns hornsby or whatever doesn't get home till six or something. He got home at 10 o'clock the other morning and then sort of sleeps all day, gets up, has dinner and then goes back to work. Um, and I like, this is a massive, this is kind of like contentious um, topic, I guess. Like there's a lot of 
everybody's situation is different. But if this was something that I was going through a bit with Helena, um, did, how far does he have to drive to work? Um, sometimes um, it's an hour, an hour and a half. Depends yep. where it is. Um, a while yep. ago, he was driving two and a half hours. So there's five hours a day driving. Yep. Yeah. He's the only so, one where he's working at the moment that's got a truck licence. So he's driving from Hornsby to Sydney and back a few times. So he, he said yeah. he's, he's fallen asleep at the wheel a few times driving yeah. home. Yeah. And I'm like, you, you can't do that. You're going to yeah. end up dying and killing yourself or someone else. Like, it's crazy. So yeah. what I would probably do, um, and this is like this is what I would do, is I would try and introduce him to like um, audio books. I'd say you got hours to sit in a car. You know what I mean? Like this is he won't it might be it. something that triggers inside his head. Obviously, there's something that's brought you two together. So there must be something in there that that he might you know kind of think a little bit the same way as you in in that front. You know what I mean? Like, and the way that you could probably bring that out in him is just just be super passionate about it yourself, I guess. And like, yeah. eventually he may um he may. Around, or or even just trying to um like introduce him to some of the early like personal development training and stuff that you do, like when you first sign up within the modules. Like, is there any of those activities that you might be able to say to him, Hey, you know, write a bucket list or write about your ideal Mm. day? And then, you know, obviously that's that's I'm guessing has changed something in you, like since when you first signed up to then realizing this personal development stage. So, you know, is there any of those sort of activities you might participate in to sort of get that first step? Because I think that's obviously the hardest one to sort of get him on that road. Even even getting him to do that, like, I I don't know, he's like, he's one in a million, but yeah, his, mm. his father is a Buddhist and his father travels the world teaching personal development. Yeah. So his father is incredible. He's got every personal development book you could think of. And yeah. And Lloyd's grown up with it. Mm. So yeah. it's in so him. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's so in him. And he, it's, yeah, but he's a, he, I, he doesn't like to show it or express it. I think maybe it makes him feel like less of a man or something because he's vulnerable. Yeah. Or, or something. Um, I don't know what it is, but he's quite a bit younger than me as well. So, like, he's only just turned 30 and yeah. I'm, like, a bit older. <laughs> so he's still kind of, I don't know whether he's not there yet. He's not willing to, um, to take that step. Yeah. So take that step. This, yeah. um, this for us, like... Like I, I don't want to like. Um, this is a hundred percent just about Helena and I. Like this is just our experience with this. Um, going through this journey of like developing into the person that you need to be to like try and achieve results with this kind of business. I mean, you know, you you of course know all about it. But like, as I started doing this, I think this is what sort of got Helena a little bit more involved, a little bit more interested. I started to find out a lot more about myself. I said I got so excited about doing the 90 day video journey. I was telling, I remember telling her about this yeah, 90 day yeah. video journey thing. And she was just looking Where at me. Yeah. What? Shit. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> what? You're going to do video. <laughs> you know, like, and all of a sudden, she, as I started to find out more stuff about myself and started to bring that out to a bit to the surface, it was like the relationship started again and a new honeymoon period started because she starts mm-hmm. learning a lot more about me. And I actually yeah. spoke about this a lot. Um, at Perth because it's something I hadn't actually realized too much until we started I guess going through platinum but it is and uh, like there was a point where I guess that all tied in with momentum day at Brisbane and stuff like that that just triggered something inside Helena and she could see straight away what we're doing and like Helena's parents and actually and my parents too so traditional like oh my god it's a headache how traditional they are especially Helena's parents and like she, a bit of that had rubbed off into her, definitely. Like, show me how. I, I will not even, like, entertain yeah. this until yeah. you can see how. But as when you start to understand, like, um, mindset, like, you, you know, your, um, your higher faculties in your mind, your intuition, will, reason, uh, all that sort of stuff, you have the ability to bloody, you, you start to understand that you, you don't have to know how this stuff's going to work. 
you, you just design it inside your own mind and then start working towards that vision. And that's, yeah. it'll, 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 as long as you stay pers- persistent, it'll eventually manifest for you. And yeah. um, I didn't understand that at all, by the way, when I was like, when we, like, especially in the early stages, I just sort of knew and I think, I know something inside Helena, she, I think she just enjoyed learning this new part about me. And, and then of course, once she got more involved in it as well, I started learning all these new stuff about her as, as she started learning new stuff about her. And it's yeah. like a new start on the relationship. Not that we're in trouble, but it, it really was. And I think if you really stick to this somehow and really trust it, um, and, and, and you see that in your husband and he starts actually pretty, and he starts to more see it in you. It's going yeah. to be a massive change and there will be something that triggers him to just pick up a bloody Tony, Tony Robbins podcast or a, or a, um, you know, Bob Proctor or something like that, you know, yeah. and then all of a sudden it'd be like, Oh, hang on. It's actually starting to make sense now that my wife is, is involved in this company that's, that's doing all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And that might be the thing that triggers him to get more involved with it. With yeah. You. And then with the other part of your question too, so about how right. right now you need to focus on blogging and that sort of thing. So obviously there's so much content and there's so many webinars going on and it's, you really want to be involved, but yeah, it can get super confusing as to know what you want to do. And when I first started doing this on um, uh, full time, so in June of this year, I actually hadn't gone through the seven day video series. I hadn't done any of the modules because Grant had done that all on, on the startup. And so yeah. I went, I need to learn this because if I'm going to be talking to people who are going through this, then I need to experience that firsthand. And so yeah. that's where I started um, yeah, in June. And I just went, radio, let's just go through all the basics. Um, and then once I'd done that, I was at the overwhelm stage because I went, well, now what do I do? What should I be focusing on now? I'm doing this full time. I feel expected to be doing this, you know, eight or 10 hours a day, but what am I actually learning from it and what am I putting into practice? And so for a few weeks, I did too much learning and not enough doing. And I know that now because... Well, Patty said to me, you're in an educational mode. Yes. I went to go through the modules again and she said, no, you know it, you've been through it once, you know, you know it, you need to start doing because like I've been joined up like for five months or so now and I've got no leads of I haven't progressed at all and she said well you know what's the point then you need to start doing yeah she said at the moment three blogs a day but by February I need to be blogging five times a day yeah so I think, I, <laughs> I think for that um when you're talking about like organic when you're talking about doing organic traffic and getting organic leads I actually asked Justin about this um in Perth probably speak to someone like Angie about Instagram. Instagram's probably a major thing when it comes to doing things organically. Angie um, and I do catch up a bit. So she, and yep. she's helped me a lot. We live close by. Oh, oh good. Awesome. <laughs> my, yeah. my mentor. He mentioned, no, think- he mentioned to um, personal Facebook page, start sharing stuff on your personal Facebook page and like you'll have your business page and all that as well, but like really turn yourself as far as social media is concerned, really be that yep. person who you really want to be. And, yeah. um, and people also, are going to start to notice. People are going to start to notice. And like yeah. you crack an elite sale and get yourself $1,000 to do, um, you a know, bit of paid do a bit of paid yeah. marketing. All of a sudden, if you know what to do and you've got that experience with organic, like you're yeah. really going to know what you're doing when like paid marketing, the technical side of things won't take you long to learn. And if you've got experience doing a lot of organic stuff, you'll be able to really pin that, yeah. pin that $1,000 elite yeah. sale into, into some paid marketing and then, that might carry on into something else, you know, that. Yeah. That's why I wanted to, to learn the basic skills and, you know, do the 90 day video challenge and sort of know what I'm doing before I start actually doing paid marketing. Yeah. yeah. The thing okay. is though too, is that you're going to learn the best doing it. And that's yeah. what we did. And by yeah. failing, then you learn, oh, okay, well, I'm not going to do that next time. Mm. I can guarantee you after putting that campaign up this week, which went to the whole world, I'm not going to do that again, at least not for a very long time because it just like, yeah, it was, it was a very obvious mistake, which, we, yeah. We're know. probably the worst people to talk to regarding um, organic, unpaid, oh, yeah, not paid. <laughs> yeah. But we have done none of it basically. We like our yeah. Instagram, we haven't, we really have done jack shit because we just, we just <laughs> yeah. had this marketing budget and we just went, right, we want to learn this. We want to start. Yeah. 
Uh, however, we can um, <laughs> we we can provide you with some advice based on what we've gone through um, by yeah. doing paid stuff. So the really really important thing when you're at the stage of knowing where you have to be is that you need to focus on one course until success. So yeah. if you're doing blogging right now, learn absolutely everything that you need to about blogging and don't watch a Facebook webinar. Don't do, you know, so for me, for example, this morning, um, I went on the elite mastermind and I was listening to that for a little bit. And then when I realized they were talking about Facebook, I just, I left because I went, you know what, this is going to go for an, an hour and a half or however long goes for two yeah. hours. And yeah. you know, my time is going to be a lot better spent learning about AdWords and more about YouTube. And because that's yeah. where I'm currently marketing because yeah, I've done a bit of Facebook in the past, but currently it's not my focus. So I'm not going to sit through a webinar for a couple of hours on Facebook and it, everything's yeah. recorded. It's in the back office. If in the future we decide to move to Facebook then I'll go back and watch that. And so yeah. yeah, it's really important to just focus on that one platform and just learn everything you can about it and speak to people that are doing it and seeing what's working for them. So even get on the tribe and just put a post out and say, Hey guys, I'm really trying to get into blogging. Um, I'd really love it if someone can share their experiences with me um, and what things have worked and what hasn't. Um, and that's the best way you're going to learn as well is from seeing what's worked for other people too. So yeah. definitely reach out and get involved with people that have been doing it. Yeah, it's it's uh, a yeah. yeah, like it's, I know that like even Dan Holloway got down to basically fifty dollars in his bank account. So like he's gone from absolutely nothing to being able to market. I don't know what he's spending now, but it'd be ridiculous. A lot. So like yeah. there is obviously yeah. a way to do it. There is a way to do it. There, yeah, and I'm not I'm not giving up. This is yeah. like the first time in my life that I've said myself I am not giving up I've done so many jobs in my life and I've been one of those people where I've just you know photography and then massage and traveling and working on boats and yeah done everything but yeah and I've never you know I don't know anything about computers and I've never done anything like this before but I've said to my husband this is this is me this is my thing and yeah. this is what I'm gonna do so and I'm not going to give up. Good on you. Really? Yeah. So, really? Yeah. Change some words. Change some words? Instead of, you know, instead of saying, I am not going to give up, because all your head will say here is give up, turn words around and say, yeah. I, this is going to, this is successful. <laughs> not going to, yeah. this is successful. You see, and you can feel the difference, and all of a yeah. sudden, that energy has put you higher. You're not not yeah. going to do nothing. Yeah, it doesn't make sense to the head because the brain only ever hears facts. It doesn't yeah. hear falsities. Everything yeah. you think, it's back in there. And by the way, you see these funny little things, sticky mm. notes. Yeah. Well, I've worked with several different people in SFM and the making process. They all have different sticky notes on their wall and blue tech. And that's their bucket list. And they're able to shift them around. And on that wall over there is the ones they have written about, videoed about, and succeeded about. Yeah, that's So they physically idea. take them off, yeah. And one guy had, he said, I don't know, I haven't got even three ideas. By the end of three or four days, he had his seven-year plan down the other end of the hallway. He literally <laughs> picked up a sticky note and ran down the hallway, right, stuck it there. I said, like, what are you doing? He said, well, this is going to be everything in seven years. And he's shifted bits and pieces around. And sure enough, everything is That's sticky it. noted. It's a great idea. Plus, something I did, uh, Angie... Angie will be yeah. proud of me. Look, I put my savers Oh, you put your savers up. Very yeah. good. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, Angie told so. me about savers the other day. So, yeah, I oh. printed it out and put it next to my bed. So I've, start, I've been doing that every morning when I wake up. As I said, it's very good. The miracle mornings are very good. I've only recently started it, but I just think it's really good. Yeah. Yeah, I've... Mm. Since I've been doing that in the last couple of days, I feel 
I do feel more positive. Today's the first day I've had more energy in I don't know how long. So, yeah, it's been good. That's good. It's working for me. You're looking more alive today. Mm, I do feel a bit more alive today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Yeah. When you're on the bottom levels, concentrate also on your syndication. Okay. Well, anyone who comes in at the 29.95, they learn how to blog, but what do they do with it? So they should be learning how to syndicate and putting that into practice. And that is in the last in, 20 minutes of the call that Patty mentioned to you. Yes, Danielle's call. Yeah. So I have got on yep yeah, two of those calls as well. So I try and, you know, look at the recordings mm -hmm. maybe half an hour every day. But um, I've been trying to finish a do a blog today, so it's been taking up a bit of time. So <laughs> that's good. You're putting something into action and you're making it work. Yeah. So that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. How are you, how are you doing, Nadine? Quickly. Because I know yeah, you're in the middle of your good. Because you're in the middle of your move. You've actually got a stressful time. You're in the middle eight of the move. Days I saw the yeah. eight days. I saw the container that you posted. So I thought I know we're getting close. I was yeah. having a laugh at. Is it Kelly? Yeah. Um. Do, doing your blogging when someone gives you this wonderful advice to do three a week or three a day or whatever, and <laughs> one blog first of all took me about three days to write, and then I had to meditate over it and work yeah. out. Yeah. But I've, I've done 21 now and, and the difference between, I mean, to me that's so many, but the difference between um, the first ones to the last one I did, I was really quite proud of it, but it makes me laugh because I think a blog takes me three or four days, even a week to write one. You know? yeah. This is the first one I've done where I've actually, I haven't written it down on paper first, I've just yeah. started writing it. Very so, clear. Very good. And it was about something that I love, so it was, I got it done a lot quicker. Very good. It's, so I know, that's the idea. Don't overlook uh, putting videos into your blogs as well, yeah. which is will also add your field base to go forward. So uh, whatever you're going to write about, put it on video as well and, and actually make that a part of your blog. And um, Susan's advice about uh, like repurposing or syndicating, uh, you could, uh, the videos that you make to go into your blog could be posted on Facebook and or other forums uh, and YouTube. with a call to action and those sorts of things. So, uh, yeah, YouTube, exactly. So, so that, you know, go on. What would a yeah. call to action be in a, in a video? It might be as simple uh, as like or comment. Okay. Or, or you can put a link. Um, put a link in the uh, comments below. Click on the link below to find out more information. All right, that's great. And how do you do the videos? Um, you just record it on your computer and do you have to make them? Or your small? phone. You've got a smartphone, mm -hmm. iPhone, Samsung. Yeah. 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 I don't want to be confident yet. I took a video today and it was 1.3 gig. And I, can't, I did it on my phone, so I'm going to have to work out a way. I, when I transferred it to my computer, yep. um, I put it through Windows Movie Maker and re edited it, but it's still taking 20 minutes or 30 minutes to be uploaded. So I'm wondering. Yeah. Uh, um, use Handbrake. 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 Uh, .fr. It's um, downloads to your computer and it will compress the video a little bit. So and what about on the phone? Transfer it from your phone to your, to your computer and then okay. upload from your computer. Okay, that's the old fashioned way, but I'll keep yeah. doing it like that. But, I mean, well, you I'm should... old fashioned, look at me. Well, <laughs> the, the other option is to do it on Facebook Live or YouTube Live. So you record it and it loads straight onto YouTube or Facebook. Mm. Okay, and the Facebook Live I attempted two or three weeks ago. It didn't go live at all. I just landed up with a video. So I don't know how that happened, but I thought I was really clever doing a live and it wasn't live. It was just a video <laughs> recording. At least you got to practice. <laughs> did it, but, but did it upload to Facebook? I had to work it out and, and, and upload it, but it, yeah. I did have it. So it was all right. 
All right. And the other question I wanted to ask about um, the black, the the gold and black. If we're thinking about upgrading and and because of having a marketing budget, I don't think that I would be able to go past gold because we're actually selling our house to move into our you know like business so instead of a franchise or a company we were going to buy a coffee shop or something um i think i've got my husband behind me to still go gold but would a thousand dollars or something a month be enough to start off with and is can i have that question answered yes yes a thousand bucks a month is heaps okay hey. um I'll, that's what i was going to talk about before i forgot ben morris um i don't know if anybody knows ben and blanche they are positioned gold, right? And they were doing $80,000 years at gold. They targeted their audience to, like they targeted people who would probably want to go and gold and no higher. Like I was talking to Ben about this the other day and he said they got bugger all platinums and blacks. So they just got all these elites and all these people going up to gold. And I think he said his biggest year was 80 grand or something, like at gold. Like I couldn't believe it when he told me that. And I said... Yeah how much did you lose? And he said, oh, look, not many people went above gold because they, they just tuned down their target audience to target people who would want to take advantage of about that levelling. And yeah. yeah, like gold, you can earn great money at gold. It's like, I think, and I had this idea in my head as well, like, oh, you need to be black to be doing like the, you know, the 20, 30, $40,000 months. But like, it, you can do whatever you want. It doesn't yeah, matter where yeah. you are. As long as you're willing to put the work in and willing to, Whatever you know, like we at you know, gold level, you can be t targeting small businesses that want to learn yeah. how to market their business, and the well, gold package is ideal. Especially what they've got now with um, all those digital marketer certifications. Yeah. If someone's really wanting to to do that. That's right. That could be a part of your target audience. Like I don't think everybody has to be targeting people who hate their job and want to get out of their job. And yeah. I think I, I, I'm going to get into contact with those guys because I want to find out more. They yeah. obviously figured it out. They really got it. Yeah. And to generate that kind of income at, at gold, I think they're the only people I've really heard done that, really. Like, not that I've heard from many people, but, yeah, like they, yeah, it's like it's not one of those things that, that can't be done. It definitely yeah, can be I, th done. I think the way Ben and Blanche do it is the fact that they, they're doing consulting and they're consulting, yeah. like, businesses. It's easy. It's just easy as part of their package is they say well if you want to learn this you go and learn off ECFM and go the gold package yeah mm -hmm. and yeah. You, you promote it like that and they go oh cool I'll go and do gold yeah but they're not they're not really wanting to go black or platinum because they've already got an existing business they just want the information that they can use mm. to drive their business yeah mm. I think the other thing, Nadine, is uh, if you've got an initial budget of ten thousand uh, dollars, again, follow the the SFM plan. That um, as you begin to get sales and those sorts of things, if you commit to that sort of budget of a thousand dollars a month, let's say for three months or six months, when you start to generate income, what SFM uh, suggests is that you reinvest. So, like at least eighty percent of your earnings. So that way you're able to scale up your, uh, your advertising over a period of time. So you've got your base budget and then whatever your earnings are, 80% of that also goes to increase your budget and that way you start to scale. So uh, you know, grand a month, um, that stacks. Yeah, we okay. It was only because I was putting aside originally the whole lot enough to go black and then I wouldn't have had a marketing budget. We... we um when we started marketing, when we started marketing on the 15th of August this year, really, properly marketing, I mean, um, we set aside a budget of $10,000. We just went, that's a pretty good number. We'll just go 10 grand, right? And I'm so thankful and so glad that we had that. And we started off like, okay, um, you know, how long is this going to last? That mentality. And we're like, we wanted $10 leads. So I was like, we'll get $10 leads. We got $10 leads. And I was just like, well, we're getting the leads at $10. Why don't we just keep putting more and more into this as long as the leads don't go over costs. Like it doesn't matter whether you're going to make $10,000 last, um, you know, three months or, or six months, yeah. you know? So we thought we might as well fast track this. We've already put this money aside and yeah. that's what we did. And like that was August the 15th. Like we have spent a lot more than $10,000 now and we're well ahead. Um, 
in our in our like we've earned more than than we've been marketing. So yeah. like if it it's not so much worrying about the the um the the, the amount that you're going to spend and like making it last. And I'm not and I know you weren't suggesting this anyway, but if you're getting if you've got a target of say ten ten dollar leads and your targeting is good and you know that if you're getting ten dollar leads your business is going to profit and then you start getting ten dollar leads and there's quality leads yeah that's what I mean and, and there's there's no point in not scaling up your business from there like say you get ten dollar leads at a thousand dollars you're going to get a thousand leads right and if as long as they're well targeted leads and you and you you're confident in that and you know that's that's good then obviously it's going to pay for itself. And then you have the ability, like Robbie just said, to totally reinvest and just keep reinvesting. And like, that's, a, that's where we're at at the moment. We just, every single cent that we earn with SFM at the moment, just goes straight back into our marketing. And we want to get to that point where we can spend like 10 grand a month. And, and you know, that's what we want. As long as we're happy with the, with the cost per lead that we're getting and the yep. more then that you do too, like it's not like a linear process. The more that you do, the more that you're... Um, YouTube algorithm or your Facebook algorithm or whatever learns, the more data you collect and you go, oh shit, you know, um, this, this works more than that works. And you stop doing that. You stop doing that country. You stop doing that age group. You stop doing that keyword. And then you can take all that money and then stick it into what is working. And then you're basically guaranteed that the next month you're going to earn even more. And then you take that and you scale it up. Like this whole marketing budget thing, when, when we started off with ours, and by the way, that's what we did. We, we like set up all our business bank accounts, all that sort of stuff, just invested into it, separated ourselves from that cash and went, we're going to mm. use that. If that, like, whether we lose it a hundred percent, we know that we're going to, it's going to be worth it because we're going to learn what we had to learn out of it. But once we realized we just set a target of $10 leads, I don't even really know why. I wish we set it lower now. We probably will start setting it lower. Um, we were getting $10 leads. And I, I think it was Chris Hall. He's like, well, just, just what's what's the spending. point in dragging it out? Spend more. As long as yeah. you're getting the $10 leads, you're going to get that thousand, thousand leads quicker. And as long as your targeting is right, you should get the sales and then just reinvest. So okay. like we, that's kind of a little bit off topic. I know that what you were just talking about, but for anyone who's sitting there with a marketing budget and, and worried about stretching it out, as long as your targeting's good um, and as long as you're getting like in the initial stages, you don't just blast into it. You know, if you're spending thirty dollars a day and you're getting three or four, or five leads, and you're happy with the cost, start scaling it up from there. Yeah, and you make it sound really easy because yeah, you know, that's just in hindsight. It was not easy. Sorry about that. Still in the learning curve. You know, like yeah. I haven't finished my website yet, and you know, all sorts of things. So we're still in the massive learning curve too. I'm not. I'm not going to sit here and try and tell you that we're bloody gurus because we're not at all. Our and website took us like a year to get oh, online. We're the so. dumbest people when it comes to the stupid website. Margie's <laughs> listening right now and I know she'd be sitting here laughing at herself because <laughs> Margie's only been, what, nine weeks into the, in, into the SFM and she is probably bloody where we were at about six months in, if probably more. Yeah. So, like, we were shit. Like, we're not, yeah, we're not gurus at all. Well <laughs> Very interesting. Yeah. And then I just wanted to say to Kelly as well, like I excused myself and left the call. But um, when I came into this, I, I, I watched some of Karina Thomas's stuff and, and she actually did a, a, some conversations about being in a, a doing a closet, um, what is it, career, doing this in a closet for the first, because of the, what people used to think of her. And I was exactly the same. And I think even my husband rolled his eyes when I spoke about Abraham Hicks or Eckhart Tolle or what I was learning here because my career history is just to leave something if I didn't like it, relationships and careers, you know, bang, I'm gone. But so I didn't have a very good reputation in that way but when you look at it differently, I was definitely pleasing myself mm. but it, it was funny after sort of putting up with Pete rolling his eyes so many times for so long and then someone rang him one day and when I heard him give them advice that, I he rolled his eyes at me for giving. I understood that my talking to him continuously about what I'm learning, why I'm learning it, what I'm thinking about my life because of it. He was rolling his eyes and listening to me nag, but he's basically on board. Like I've done videos with Pete saying hello in them, or he's been right next to me while I've been doing them. And I talk about Pete all the time. He's finally got accustomed to my honesty and authenticity because I don't care about anyone's feelings anymore. The way I feel is what get, goes on camera. And I've That's got to a point where my whole life's changed to authentic 
me for him as well. So we've changed. Like we now have that close of honor. So I think that's really good. That's so cool. That's really cool. Yeah. Because I couldn't do that in front of my husband because he'd be like, you're an idiot. You're a dick. You're talking to yourself. Like, yeah. If, but I did it. I guarantee would, if you be authentic, you give him the space to be authentic as well and he'll eventually you'll crack him. And I don't, I don't know your husband. I'm sorry, I don't know your husband, but honestly, just stick at it. I know you're going to stick he at just, it. He just likes to stir me up and my problem <laughs> is that I've always been someone that reacts and that's also something that I've really got to learn with the personal development, yep. not to react because I get... It can be really sensitive and emotional, like if it's something to do with the kids or whatever, or they say something, I'll get upset or oh, my husband does something. or And I shouldn't be reacting to certain things. And I, it's my ego and that's what I need to work on, just killing that ego. And I've had... No. Begin, begin to no. read Eckhart Tolle's book, begin to read Eckhart Tolle's book, A New Earth, and uh, that will smash ego. And, uh, What's it called, A New Earth? A breakthrough book called A New Earth, Eckhart Tolle. Brilliant, brilliant book. Um, I like him. I, I, yeah, it's, it is a brilliant book. Um, I love you. You read that, that will transform your life, I promise you. Thank you. Ego, ego. Yeah, Kelly, as well, like, uh, while I was doing my 90-day video challenge, my mum said um, what I was saying was boring. My husband was watching them and he said, you're not really saying anything. And I just, like, I played everyone to him. Um, you wouldn't believe what was in them. But I was like, I'm being deep and meaningful to this camera of the whole world. And he's saying I'm not saying anything. And I just realised my own authenticity then. It didn't matter what anyone else thought, even my husband now. Mm. And now he knows me better. Because I did the 90 day video challenge, I know me better. Yeah. Good on you. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yes. You've got so That's much cool. more to yeah. give now and so much more to offer as well. The more you get to know you, the more you're going to get comfortable with you, the more. Like, you're preaching to the choir here. I was yeah. like oh. a right wing bloody know-it-all little shit really like me like seriously That's like my husband. I, started, <laughs> I started reading rich dad poor dad and then i started to pot down real quickly bloody oh and he starts putting inspirational yeah. stuff around the house <laughs> i was like well, who is this guy yeah. guess what it did for our relationship it turned it into bloody didn't turn it we weren't bad like we're always been a pretty no, decent no, guy, I get it. On, on the surface, we were pretty decent. Deep down, I don't think we were quite there. Now we are. And people are getting, people are seeing it in us. We're making yeah. friends. We're making friends a lot quicker than we're losing them, but we're also losing people that we don't really like resonate with it anymore. It's kind of good. Yeah. You know? yeah. Like, it is good, yeah. One it's of those things, though. <laughs> like, when you're around authentic people and when you're around, like I, like, I find it so refreshing to sit there and talk to Amy Taylor, like anybody who saw her at, yeah. Um, momentum day like she's just she's like one billion percent authentic <laughs> and like i've got friends that i know now why i like them so much is because when you talk to them you know that you're just talking straight to them they're not holding anything back and straight from like, the heart. Oh, this conversation has been really good and, and nadine i reckon your videos and all that stuff mm. would be amazing as well because of, because of that the more you be yourself the more it's you know that's one thing i've learned recently yeah um yeah and but Another thing though, Grant, is I know because like my husband, he doesn't always watch all mine. He always says, oh, they're boring as well. He's, he's still the same. They're boring. You don't smile. But I do. I go live every day also on my page and I flopped today, failed a bit on it, but that's all right. Um, but no, he doesn't watch him. But then I always say, that's all right. It can't resonate with everyone. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's great. Yeah. And the, other thing, the, the other thing with um, the videos i think i don't know if i've told who i've told it i think it may be in cali i'm not sure if i've told you nothing um sometimes i don't have time to write the blogs so i send them off to fiverr so i use some of my 90 day videos mm. that i had in the challenge send them to someone in fiverr in fiverr they do nine videos for they will do nine blogs based on the videos um for fifty dollars wow. and then i just tweak them to personalize them for myself when i get them back that's so incredible. all I do is send the videos and my I, I send five keywords per video and 
yeah, they send them back to me. So over the Christmas period, now when I know I've got loads of rallies coming, I will have them get prep my blogs, and all I will be doing is tweaking them. Super that way, awesome. I can get them up. Who nice. does that for you, Ange? I get it done in Fiverr. I've got someone in Fiverr. How good! That does it. So I just searched Fiverr.com and wrote a couple of messages to a few people to find out who would actually use videos to write my blogs. I said, I've got all my content on videos. Who's prepared to listen to them and write some blogs? That's really great. So, it's good. so it does work that way. Yeah, Helps good. out. Saves We're time. Yeah. yeah, it's getting late. So, um, it is, it is. I'm meant we'll, to be doing something else. So, yeah. We'll wind up the call. Um, thanks for coming and uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.